Fowler told, shedding his skin, live in effect. So they used their back legs to scrape the skin from the back. As they eat the skin, as you can see, he's eating his skin. And they eat the skin because it's filled with different nutrients that are apparently good for them. So as they shed the skin, they eat the skin. And then their skin turns really wet and slimy. Um, it has some type of a bacteria killing agent. Um, and it protects the coating of their skin. And within probably 15 minutes or so to 20 minutes after shedding their skin, um, they'll turn back to their normal color, which they get really, really light after shedding. Um, and the shiny appearance will go away. You see, I see him. He's pulling the skin off and he's eating it. It's a really, really cool process, and it's amazing when you can catch it, because you don't always catch it. Sometimes I'll see them after it's done, but it is really amazing to watch. And you see he's constantly closing and squeezing his eyes. That is how they digest. So he's squeezing his eyes to push the food down and digest the food because they don't have teeth. That's Cosmo. And they're actually in a side tank right now because I was actually feeding them uh, some night crawlers. Um, and this is Tar. And Tar was just sitting over watching him until I turned the camera on her. Um, but she's watching Cosmo shed. They tend to do that. I think it's kind of interesting to them because they see what they're doing in the flesh. <clears throat> so after he ate one night crawler, he sat there for about five minutes and then he started to shed his skin. So I'm kind of catching the tail end, guys. But it is an awesome process. I think he might be done. I knew it was the reason he was being so calm because he typically doesn't like to be in a smaller cage. He kind of goes wild um, until you get him out of there. So when he ate that one, it was just super calm. I knew something was going on. I didn't know if it was just the night crawler bothering him or he, I guess he was getting ready to shed his skin. So Look at that skin. It looks so good. Shiny and pliable. These guys are so cool. They are such an underappreciated pet. Very easy to take care of. Very, They're very smart. Tar looks like she's going in for the gusto on this worm. He may be getting ready to be devoured. This is Rockstar. Running back to look at Cosmo. Good job, Cosmo. His skin is so pretty right now. You see every little spot. And after his skin go back to normal color, you'll see some spots, but you won't see him so defined like that. So cool. Look at how cool he is. You see, Kamo? So I just woke up, guys. And I always check on the toads in the morning and make sure they're good. Um, I had to lift up this house because I noticed that my... One of my toes were shedding her uh, old skin. This is a really neat process that you guys can see. She's really, really wet. 
um, that's because their skin secretes like um, a material to coat their skin to protect them kind of like an antibacterial kind of thing um, to protect them uh, as they shed uh, it's a really neat process it also helps their skin to shed more this is a really neat process um, because they do eat their skin and they eat their skin because their skin is filled with tons of nutrients that are really good for them apparently so she's kicking the old skin off with the back feet if you can as you just saw um, and she ate the skin and you see her eye just squeezing down that's how they digest their food um, and push their food down to their bellies because they don't have teeth. So they use their, their eyes to squeeze the food down and help them digest. Now as you can see she's starting to dry up a little bit. She's not as wet. So that means she's almost done. And her skin isn't going to be as light now. It's going to go back <clears throat> to her normal color a little bit as her skin starts to dry. And that... Um, antibacteria solution that they excuse me naturally secretes is starting to rescind so it's a really neat process guys I try to catch it whenever I can um yeah so I'm gonna leave her alone now because I'm sure she's sick of the camera in her face and probably wants me to put her house back yeah you might know you talked about me see you looked at you ma yes I know you want your privacy. I'll leave you alone. And that is Rockstar. Now, the other day, I got a quick video of Cosmo. I actually took them out of the big tank here and put them in a smaller tank. Um, because when I feed them, um, I call them the snack worms. Uh, what do you call those guys? The Canadian uh, night crawlers. That's more of a snack for them. Typically, I'll feed them... Um, Hornworms or dubia roaches, um, <clears throat> but every now and again I'll get those Canadian night crawlers, and oh, they just slurp them up. Um, they're a lot cheaper than the other guys, and uh, they'll eat one or two when they're good to go. Sometimes one will fill them up, which is really weird because they'll eat three and four hornworms that are extremely expensive, and they'll eat one of those cheapy guys, and <clears throat> they'll be okay. But they are such a neat. Um, amphibian they are very overlooked as a pet they are very easy to take care of really awesome pets they are very smart um, yeah and look how beautiful she is like her skin looks so beautiful after a shed it's so light she's turned so we really can't see her now she's really seeing my get it out of my face now, like, she's still trying to scrape some more skin from back there because she used her back legs and they kind of kick the old skin off um, towards the front and then they're able to eat the skin. But, yeah, we don't get to see it often. It's a really nice, uh, it was a really awesome process. Uh, <clears throat> and I thought you guys might want to see and learn about it and why. So, yeah, that's it. Um, she's all done shedding her skin. Now, they do do this sometimes, um, a couple times a year. Uh, as adults, as uh, babies, they may do it once a month. But as they get older, it may uh, go down to three times a year, you know, four times. It all depends. Um, the more uh, moist their environment is and humid, it makes it easier for them to shed their skin. Um, I kind of knew that she was getting ready to shed too because when they, right before they shed, they, they'll take a huge yarn. And when they take a yarn like that a couple times, that means that they're kind of busting the skin or breaking the skin up so that it can uh, break a little easier for them to go ahead and scrape off with their back legs. And then they're um, able to get it so that they can start eating it and pulling it with their mouth. So, yeah. Neat process. Fowler toad. Part of the American toad species. They're really neat. Definitely get your children one. They are the amazing pets. Alright, you guys have a super Sunday. Bye. <clears throat> see if we see Cosmo in there.
right, guys. Um, just looking for the other toe, Cosmo. Um, I do have a smaller repti ramp in here that they can walk up and get into the smaller pond if they want to. And then we have a larger pond over here for these guys. Um, because it is two of them and both of them can soak in this bigger one over here uh, right there uh, if they want. So we got some fake plants. In the summertime, I do go outside on my tree and I get uh, real plants. I'll kind of uh, soak them in some hot water to make sure there's no um, you know, eggs or anything on there from my side or any type of disease or anything. And then I'll um, dry them and then <clears throat> I'll mist them a little bit with um, the bottled water that we use for them because we don't use sink water. Sink water is not good for them because it has chlorine and chemicals that their body absorbs and that's not good for them. So I do use um, purified water. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, any bottled water that we don't uh, drink, I'll put them together, save them, or they'll just have a, you know, a fresh one. So that's how we do that. Um, I do keep a little bit of dryness over here and a little moisture. So like near the house where they can hide, I keep a little moisture in there so they can have a little moisture because they don't drink water. Their water absorbs moisture through their skin. So wherever they sit or wherever they are, they can soap up moisture. So I'll have it inside their habitats. As you can see where she was sitting, it's kind of moist. Inside that house is kind of moist, but on the outside I leave it a little dry, just like outside um in this wood or uh, wood habitat sometimes they sit up here in between there they'll sit on this part um they'll sit in the inside of it that's a little dry but i still missed it sometimes and if they get too dry they can always again soak in their um tubs cosmo is over here um this is actually one of my dollar tree um I have uh they call them they call them sand molds i believe kids can take them out to the beach i actually um measured the spaces out and i cut those two spaces out and used it as another hiding spot for them you have to have a lot of hiding areas for american toes because they love to hide um and if it's too much light, they like to get away. So um, they do have four different habitats in here right now. You don't want to have it too crowded because, again, you want to have space in the walk. So they can walk through here on each side to walk out that way into the bowl or over to that one. Um, they can walk through there to come to this one. A uh, space where they can walk behind here over to that one. So they have a lot of space. They can run, hide. If they want to sit right here, they can hide. Sit over here. It's a space to hide. Um, it's a lot of room in here, guys. I'm going to be moving this house back. She's done shedding now. So I'm going to cover her back up. Because it's kind of like protection to them as well. Uh oh, wait a minute, Mom. Sorry. There we go. So she's in there now. She's she's still protected. Um, I want to lift that up. So you guys can see it's a lot of moisture under there. A lot of room under there for them. It's, um, sometimes both of them will hide in there. Um, the dirt is actually pretty darn deep. Um, you want to make sure the dirt stays really deep. And it's not regular dirt. This is called coconut husk. Um, if you guys can see, I can push this all the way down in there. It's really deep. Um... Because they have to be able to burrow, which is um, bury themselves down in the dirt uh, for moisture. Or if they just want to kind of get some rest, that's what they'll do. Again, and I like to leave space where they can walk um, and maneuver. Alright. So, it's plenty of space to walk and maneuver out of this side. As you guys can see. I hope it's not too dark. Um... And then you can kind of walk over and move that way. And this little house hiding over here is Cosmo. Cosmo is my really hyper t uh, fowler toe. He loves to run and jump. This is Cosmo. And that was the picture I showed, or well, the video I showed you guys the other day when, um, when uh, he was shedding. So we did catch him in the smaller tank when I took them out to eat those uh, night crawlers. I take them out to eat the Canadian night crawlers because uh, obviously Canadian night crawlers and uh, red wigglers and stuff like that like to be in the dirt. I don't feed them red wigglers. They do secrete like a poison on their skin that's kind of icky so they not they won't 
uh, eat those too much. Some will, and if they do, more power to them. I don't, so I get the Canadian night crawlers, and they like those much better. Um, if you see, he just looked at me. Um, he barely likes me to even touch him. Like he doesn't want us to touch him. If we barely, if we come by him, he's ducking. He's gonna run. It's too early. See, he's trying to bury himself down in the dirt. See that you guys? See that he's trying to run down into the dirt. Hey, Cosmo. Hey, boy. Hey, Cosmo. Hey, Cosmo. Let's see. He's duck his little head. Okay, Ma, I'm gonna leave you alone. So I'll put his house back. And so with this one, I like it because he can walk out on this side and he always kind of sneaks that way and go in or he can come out on this side. Um, he's also able to see what's going on. I do have a few other habitats uh, for them, guys. Uh, what I tend to try to do is um, once a week, I'll go in and I'll keep like these in here. I've rearranged these probably twice this month. And they actually like that because then it's like they got a new little way to walk around the world. I'll reposition everything in here. Like this water bowl was over here. Um, just a week ago, I had this over here. I had that one back over there, and I had the green one over here. Um, I took this, I had this one out, and I had like a yellow one like that, but it was two ways you could go in it. I took the other one out, and I got this one because in the summertime, it gets a little more humid in there because it's warmer in the house. So they like to actually climb up here. They'll walk up the stairs here, and one of them will sit up here, you know, while the other one is under there. So, um, yeah. They tend to have a good time. They have a pretty decent habitat. Um, I do keep a little greenery in there for them. And I switch that around. Um, as you can see. Uh, so just little pieces here and there. Um, I do have some uh, natural uh, wood sticks and stuff. That I actually bought at Dollar Tree. A bag of them. And then I boiled them. Um, to make sure, you know, all the stuff was off. There was no chemicals and things like that. Now, I have a ton of these sticks in here. They're kind of buried throughout the dirt. They can fill them when they walk and burrow. Um, but yeah, there's like a whole bunch over here. Uh, sometimes they just, you know, when they burrow, they just get lost in there. But they do like the sticks. The sticks does kind of help with the moisture. Um, it gives them that natural feel of outside. Um, yeah, I'm going to put a couple of rocks in, some bigger rocks, um, soon, just to switch it up for them in about another month. Yeah, so I try to keep it spacious for them, but as natural as to outside habitat as possible. I did keep up the backdrop that came with it. Um, it does pretty good. It doesn't absorb a lot of moisture, and I did cut it down at the bottom, so it may look like it's going all the way down to the bottom, but it's not. It's actually cut off, and I guess has the dirt. I have the dirt raised up a little bit, and that's what helps protect it, so it's been lasting pretty good. Um, yeah, no complaints here. This is a 25 to 30, no, 25 to 30 gallon tank. Um, from zoom it uh it is glass so you have to be careful um to you have to make sure that you have a towel on the top um uh, throughout the evening sometime or night because with glass it tends to dry out a lot and won't hold the moisture in um so i make sure or either you know i missed it often so we keep up pretty good with them. This they do have holes here, um, all the way across where it helps them breathe. Um, we do have two screens up here. Um, I do have their UV lamp, as you can see. This is their UV lamp that I have here on top, um, which is good for them. It natu it naturally emits uh, uh, UV rays from the sun, which is good for them because it helps them with their mobility of their tongue. Um, and being able to get their tongue sticky to catch their prey. So that is a biggie for them. And they're not by a window. Um, so getting some of that natural sunlight is good for them. Sometimes, not every day, but sometimes. Um, and I kind of know when they need it. So, yeah. Those are our two fowler toads. Part of the American toad species. Very neat. There's not a lot of information on these guys. So I thought that it would be cool to... Um, yeah, just touch that and occasionally bring you guys some of that. And let's see what Tar Tar is doing much better now. She's good to go. Ma's going to move that out your way. I know you don't want that in your way. And I'll leave you alone. Happy Sunday, Tar.
All right. All right, guys. Until next time, Gems. Have a great Sunday. Bye.